In this video, I will review the answers for quiz four review. Problem one says the following. Two dice are tossed five times. Compute the following. Getting a sum of seven on all five tosses. Whenever we toss dice, those are independent events. So each probability for, for each toss remains the same. So quick way of calculating the answer to part A is to calculate the chance of getting a sum of 7. That is 6 out of 36. Raise it to the fifth power. The answer is 0 0.00012. Part B is saying do not get a sum of 7. Well, altogether, there's 36 outcomes when you toss two dice. If, there's, if six outcomes produce a sum of seven, that means 30 outcomes will produce out, will not be sums of seven. So for part B, we take 30 out of 36, raise it to the fifth power because we're tossing the dice five times. The answer is 0 0.402. Part C says getting at least one sum of seven on all five tosses. There's a formula that we use. It's one minus pr the probability that none of the outcomes is a sum of seven. Well, we've already calculated that probability in part B, so it's one minus 0 0.402, which is 0 0.598. Number two states the following. A person is selling puppies. She has five French Bulldogs, six Pomeranians, and four Chihuahuas. If a customer purchases three dogs, what's the chance that he buys three French Bulldogs? These are dependent events because each time a puppy is purchased, we cannot use the puppy in the next computation for the probability. So for example, let's focus on the first puppy that's purchased. The chance that that puppy is a French Bulldog is five out of a total of 15 puppies. One of those five is purchased by the customer. That means there's only four French Bulldogs left out of 14 puppies in total. So that's the probability for the second selection. And then finally, for the third selection, we assume another French Bulldog has been purchased. We end up with now just three French Bulldogs that are left out of a total of 13. Multiply these probabilities together to get two out of 91. Number three, we have a contingency table that represents the favorite method of relaxation according to gender. The first thing that we do is we find the total of each row, total of each column. The grand total, you could either add this row or this column, is 125. So we're assuming we select a person at random from the table. We want to know what's the chance that the person meditates and is male. Remember, and is an overlap. So we're looking at the overlap of meditate and male. That's 15 out of 125, which reduces to 3 out of 25. For part B, this notation, the way we read it, it says the probability that the person reads given that the person's a female. This is a conditional probability. The condition is that the person is a female. So we only focus on all the females. There's 58, and of those 58, six like to read. So the probability is six out of 58, which reduces to three out of 29. And then for part C, again, it's a conditional probability. It's the chance that the person is male given that they like to shop. So here our condition is shopping or likes to shop. There's 11 of that 11 for our male. So four out of 11. For number four, it says a person wishes to watch an action movie on a streaming service. She has three different devices that she can use to watch the movie. Also, she has four streaming services to choose from. And I'm assuming they're on all devices. Finally, 
each streaming service has 40 different action movies that she can choose to watch. How many different ways can she choose to watch an action movie? This is an example of the fundamental counting rule. First, we look at the number of devices. She has three times the number of streaming services, four times the number of movies she can watch. That all multiplies out to 400 different methods that she can use to watch an action movie. Number five, people are lining up at a checkout counter in a market to pay for their items. How many different ways can they line up? Part That's going to be what I call part A. That's since there's eight different people, eight factorial, 4,320. Now it says how many ways can three of the people line up? If they are chosen, they should say if they are chosen from the original eight and transferred to a different line at a register that has just become available. So we have eight people. We're assuming that any three people can be selected. So it's eight P3, which computes to 336. We can use a calculator to perform this computation. Number six, it says a real estate firm employs 10 female agents and five male agents. If a group of four agents are to be selected to show properties that the firm is listing on a particular day, answer the following question. A group of four of any gender is formed. So we add up our total agents, 15, and since we're selecting, order is not important, we're just selecting groups. Anytime you select a group, we're dealing with combinations. So 15C4, using a calculator, we get 1,365. Uh, for Part B, it says the group must have two men. So here we have, we have to divide our problem up into categories, men and women. So we have, let's go back. We have five men. We choose two. And since it has to be a group of four, that means the other two are females. So we have 10 f females and we choose two. So five choose two is 10. 10 choose two is 45. 45 times 10 is 450. Now part C says the group must have at least two men. At least two men means two or more men in the group. So we have to calculate all the combinations for two men, three men, finally for four men. So for two men, we already performed this calculation in part B, 450. Parts, now for the three men, we have five men, we choose three, times we have 10 women, we choose one. Five C3 is 10, 10 C1 is 10, 10 times 10 is 100. And then we have four men, we need to choose. So remember, it's at least two men, two or more men. So there's five men to choose from. We choose four. There's 10 women. We're choosing none. So 5C4 is 5. 10C0 is 1. 5 times 1 is 5. The last step is to add all of these parts together. 450 plus 100 plus 5. There's 555 groups that can be formed. And uh, for the last problem, number seven, we're looking at a, all the permutations of the letters in the word parallelogram. Here we have repetitions. So we have to do a permutation in, that involves repetitions. Keep in mind that P repeats one time, A repeats three times, R repeats two times, L repeats three times, and all the other letters repeat once. If you count all the letters up, there's 13. So we in the numerator, we have 13 factorial divided by P repeats one time, one factorial times A repeats three times, three factorial times R repeats two times, two factorial times L repeats three times, three factorial and all the other letters repeat once. So one factorial and so on. We calculate the product of all these factorials to get 72. Divide 13 factorial by 72. 
Final answer is 86,486,400. Thanks for watching the video.